here with my October book haul. I am really excited to show you these books and I have 37 books to show you today but I think at least half of them are replacements for books that I already owned that were either in really bad condition or just not the version of the book that I wanted so it kind of evens out a little bit I guess I don't know but I already have two parts of this video pre-filmed one of them is an unboxing which I will show you right now okay I washed my face and I brushed my hair and that's the extent of getting ready that I'm doing for this video I'm actually still in my pajamas even I have an unboxing today I ordered something off of Amazon and it just came in last night while I was at work and I have waited until this morning to open it so I could open it on camera for you guys. I am really excited. So I got this hefty box here and my trusty little scissors. I hate Amazon's tape got the strings in it. Classic. Gone. This is what I got. why I bought this. I saw on a book haul recently by Sarah Sunbeams that she got the book The Labyrinth, Jim Henson's The Labyrinth, and mentioned that it was going out of print and that she looked for it online and she couldn't find it anywhere and I found on Amazon that I could get The Labyrinth but it was like $80 just for the labyrinth and I found this awesome box set for $40 not including taxes after taxes it was like 42 something but it had not only the labyrinth but it also had dark crystal and the storyteller and I love Jim Henson's movies I even like the old is it the frog prince or is it the princess and the frog I don't remember. I think Sweetums was in some of Sesame Street stuff, or it, he was in other movies. But he's in that movie, <laughs> and it's got Sir Robin the Brave, which I love. I love that movie. But I also like these, and I didn't know they were books. They just came out, I think, last year. The Labyrinth came out last year. Buying this box set was cheaper than buying the labyrinth by itself, so I had to get it because I love these movies. I love all of them. So let's open this up and look at them. First of all, that's from Dark Crystal. And I don't know what the tower is, the castle is from. Probably a storyteller. And these guys on the back here are from the labyrinth. Shut up, phone. So they are hardcover. First off, the Labyrinth, which is my initial reasoning for buying this box set. It's got a cute little goblin on the back. It's got additional materials from the Jim Henson archives. They're really stiff. Of course, they're the library binding hardback, so that'll probably loosen up after I read it a couple times. And, oh wow. Okay, so it's mainly story, just story. And then you get all the way to the back here, and you get drawings, a bunch of drawings, and then you get Jim Henson's concepts, and it has actual, can you see that notebook? Oh wow. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. And then if you're interested in this, like even if you're not interested in the labyrinth, in particular if you're interested in like the dark crystal and the storyteller it's cheaper just to get it in the box set altogether. the neighbor's dog is barking and it is driving me insane it stopped so now the dark crystal 
it's got these guys on it. I forget what they're called because it's been forever since I've watched the movie. I really need to watch the movie again. I can like quote the labyrinth. I've seen it so many times, but I've only watched Dark Crystal like twice, so I can't really do that with this, but I love Jim Henson. I love his puppets or Muppets or whatever you want to call them. I really like the old kids movies that he used to. I think he did the puppets for Legend as well, which I, I just love those dark children's movies from the 80s. I grew up in the 80s and I don't know, I liked, shut up phone. I guess that's why I'm a little morbid now, but I grew up in the 80s and I love the old dark 80s films, The Labyrinth, Legend, Dark Crystal. I even watched, it was like late 80s, early 90s, that Tim Burton's Beetlejuice cartoon was out on TV, and that was my favorite cartoon. Like, I liked Care Bears, and I liked Gummy Bears, and the Smurfs, and stuff like that, but I absolutely loved Beetlejuice, so I was a really dark kid growing up, I guess. <laughs> Back to the book. Stop a rim. Now one thing beautiful and again it's just story oh this one has pictures in the middle so this one doesn't have all the cool drawings and Jim Henson's notes and everything at the end of it it does have drawings like throughout a couple of drawings throughout and at the end it has like the creating of like the notes from the author creating the novel of the book because these are novelizations of the movie, so it's like you're reading the movie. I haven't read them yet because, like I said, I just unboxed them. <laughs> and they have these cool designs on the top. Now, <laughs> squeaky squeaky. Now, the storyteller is like a bunch of little short stories. That's how the movie is. It's a bunch of little short stories, like little clips of stories. And it's got the guy telling the stories to his dog, I think. And there's the guy and the dog that he's the guy that's telling the stories and then there's this on the back and this one's written by a different author these are a c h smith and this one's anthony Mengella. i hope i'm saying that right okay this one has different illustrations in it oh but it has some color photos in the back so this one has different illustrations and a different author the illustrator for these is brian froud and this one is Hannah Christensen and Ava Esklinen. It's a really hard last name. Quit blowing your frickin' horn. Okay, I think the train's far enough away that you can't hear it anymore. No, I was wrong. Okay, the train's finally gone. So overall, kind of review on the unboxing of the books. I'm really excited for The Labyrinth. I'm really excited for Dark Crystal. I'm not sure about the storyteller because it's different authors and different illustrators. And the first two seem to be more like Jim Henson's style of drawings. And you can even tell, like if you look at these two versus this one, it's totally different style of drawing. So I'm really excited for these two. I'm not sure about this one. And this one's messed up too, like the book's messed up. On the end here, yeah, you can see that. On the end here, there's scratches on the spine. And then on the front of the book, you can't see it. There's like indentions on the front of the book too, which is weird because the outer box isn't messed up. So this got messed up before it was packaged. But this whole box set was cheaper than buying this one book by itself. And it was definitely cheaper than buying these two books. So I pretty much got Storyteller as like a side book. They're really nice quality. I like how the like the title is all shiny and it the spine is shiny and then it wraps around to the back and that's shiny too. But the rest of it's matte and it feels satiny and nice. I'm really excited about this. I think it's definitely worth the just under $45 after taxes to get it. And that's in the U.S. I'm in Indiana, so I don't know if taxes are different for other states. But for Indiana, it was like two something in taxes. It was like just a little over $42 for the box set. And the box is really nice too. It's like, it's really nice too. So I'm definitely keeping the box. I don't usually keep the box for box sets. 
unless it's like a really nice quality box. Some box sets come in like just the flimsy cardboard and I just throw those away. But this is like that's really nice. I would switch out the storyteller, like I'd let them know this, that the storyteller was messed up and see if I could switch it out or get like a new box set, but there's only six more in stock on the website, so that's as of recording this video. I don't know how long it's going to take to edit it and put it up, but as of the 13th, October 13th, that I am recording this. There are six more on the website and it says that they're supposed to be getting more in stock so hopefully they'll actually be getting more in stock because I would love for more people to get this because I for one am extremely extremely <laughs> excited. I can't even talk. I'm so excited. It's mine and I have it and now I want to watch the movies and read the books. Now this next section is books that I repurchase. Like I said, there were books that I had versions of that I didn't like or that I wanted just wanted a different version of. And these, I've already given away the version that I previously owned and I showed that in this little clip before I got rid of those. So I'm going to show that one to you here now. I wanted to film this little bit of a haul now because later on at the end of the month, whenever I actually film my official haul, I'm not going to have these other books to show you. So I'm going to get into this. Now my September haul I had purchased Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Madsen from the book outlet and it came in totally messed up. The um, cloth covering for the spine on the hardcover was peeling on both ends and the cover was all messed up and I talked to them and they sent me a new copy. There is still some damage to this but it's not nearly as extensive as the other one. This one just has a teeny tiny little tear on the corner here but the book itself is in so much better condition. So I already gave the other one to my mom so she could read it. If she doesn't like it then I'm not sure what we're gonna do. But I already gave the other one away. And I went shopping with my mom at some used bookstores and got some replacements for books that I wasn't quite happy with that I had already owned. The first thing I have to show you is the entire Lord of the Rings collection by J.R.R. Tolkien. They all match, which is so much better than what I currently have, which I'll show you. This is my current collection for the Lord of the Rings. I just got The Hobbit a little while back, but I wasn't happy with it. It wasn't the cover that I wanted. The cover that they had on the listing for the book was not the same as what I got sent. The Fellowship of the Ring, I have the movie tie-in edition, which I actually got right before the movie came out. I got to page 44 before I had to quit because my parents made me watch the movie. Then My Two Towers and Return of the King both match, but I couldn't find matching ones to go with these that were in good condition. That's what I thought this one was going to be, or at least like a similar one. I can't remember if The Hobbit actually had a matching one for this one or not. I've been looking for matching ones for these, and then I found these at a local used bookstore, and they're in almost perfect condition. One of them has a slight crease in the middle of the spine on the Fellowship of the Ring, but other than that, they're in excellent condition. The Hobbit, Fellowship of the Ring, The Two Towers, and The Return of the King. And they all match! They look so pretty! So happy! And before anybody asks, these are going to my mom. She doesn't currently have them, and she has all kinds of people that come over. I have cousins that are in high school, or like just out of high school, that go over and hang out all the time because they're closer to her than they are to me, so they hang out over there. So I'm giving these to her and they'll probably end up reading them. It's like a family library there. And the last book I have to show you for this section of the book haul is Shakespeare The Complete Works. And it's not a very pretty edition, it doesn't have a dust jacket, but it has everything in here and I've been wanting to get one and it was like $3.50 so 
if I end up finding a really nice edition, I might end up getting rid of this one at some point. But for $3.50 and the pages are really nice. They're not the really thin, like almost like rice paper pages that I've seen in other copies. And those are like newer copies that I've seen that in. You can almost read both sides of the page without flipping the page and I hate that. This one doesn't have that and it's got everything in here. So I had purchased this one which was supposed to be Shakespeare's Complete Plays and I don't think it has all of the plays in here after looking at the other one. And this was from Barnes & Noble. I had gotten it on one of the bargain deals for like $4. So it's like I got the other one for like $8 because I'm going to be getting rid of this one. I don't know if I'm going to give it to my mom. I've talked to her, but she hasn't decided whether she actually wants it or not. And then see, this one has a lot smaller font than the other one, and it's bigger. I don't know what's going on with that. But I like the font better in the other one. It actually has all of Shakespeare's works. It's not just the plays. And like I said, I don't think this one has all of the plays in it anyway. So I'm going to be getting rid of this one because I got the other one. So all of the books in this section of the haul are actually replacements for books that I already had. So I am not actually getting any more books with this, which is really cool. Okay, now to show you the rest of the books that I got in October. First, I'm going to start with the new releases that I purchased in October. And the first one is Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. And I have already read this book. For those of you who don't know about this, it is the book that Kath was writing during Fangirl. This is the fan fiction that she was writing. And some people say that it's not the same fan fiction as what she was writing in Fangirl, but I know there's at least one page in here that was directly clipped out of Fangirl because I read Fangirl right before I read this one. From what I've heard, it started out as a fan fiction itself of if Harry and Draco from the Harry Potter series had gotten together. But it's so much more than that. It's got its own characters, it's got its own storyline, and if you're worried about it being too much like Harry Potter, the only thing is, is that it's set in a wizarding, like wizarding world, wizarding school, and it's also set in England. So that's pretty much the only true like tie-ins to it. There are some characters that are similar in this to Harry Potter characters, but they have totally different personalities, there's totally different character descriptions. If you've heard that it's, I don't know, I really liked it and I didn't think it was too much like Harry Potter, like you can't really compare them. But that is for my wrap up, which you'll just have to watch that to get all of my views on this. The next new release that I picked up is The Rest of Us Just Live Here by Patrick Ness. All I know about this one is, like you know in the story, there's the main characters and then there's their friends that you don't really get to see very much of in the stories, but they're still there. And as far as I know, this book is about those side characters. They're not the ones, they're not the main characters in the story, they're not the ones that everything happens to, but they're still there. I thought that was interesting and I wanted to see what it was all about. The next pre-order I picked up is actually the last pre-order that I picked up for me. I also picked up Claymore number 27 for my boyfriend, which is tucked back behind here. You can't really see it. But the last one I have to show you for the new releases is the Twilight 10th Anniversary Edition by Stephanie Meyer. And it has life and death. It says it's Twilight reimagined, but it's just a Twilight genderbend story, which I thought was really cool, and I haven't read it yet. I want to reread Twilight before I read Life and Death so I can compare the two, because there are differences since Bella's a boy and Edward's a girl. The only thing that I had an issue with before I even purchased this, the only thing that I had an issue with is that the characters' names Bella and Edward are Bo and what is it? It's Buford and Edith. 
And those names sound way too old. I don't know of anybody even in my generation that has those names and this is like a decade after I was born that they were supposed to be born and I, I don't like the names. Like I don't know if that's going to ruin the story for me because they just seem way too old for what it's based and what is the odds that two teenagers that come together, well, teenagers that come together are going to have old-fashioned sounding names. Like it's, that's, that's the only thing that is bothering me about this so far and I haven't read it yet. I'll let you guys know what I think about it whenever I read it. I'm hoping to pick it up in November. Oh, I almost forgot about this one because it was a new release in paperback, not an actual new release, but I got I'll Give You the Sun by Jenny Nelson. And I actually hate this cover. I hate it because whenever I pre-ordered it, it had the regular cover. And now it has this little flappy thing that's going to drive me insane. I mean, it's pretty, but it has this quote on the front that I really don't want to read if it's part of the book, which I haven't read the book yet, but this wasn't the cover that was supposed to be on it because this wasn't the cover that was on the website whenever I pre-ordered it, and it didn't say that the cover was pending when I pre-ordered it, so I am angry. Grr. And here's another book that I forgot was a new release. I'm just moving my stacks of books and finding new releases buried in stacks of books. I am so sorry. I'm so disorganized for this. <laughs> okay, the next one I've been hearing tons of good things about, but I don't know anybody who's actually read it. Anybody who's talked about it hasn't really said what the book is about, but I've heard so many good things about it and so many people who have wanted to read it since it was fairly cheap for the pre-order, I went ahead and picked it up. And that is Illumine by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. And if you haven't seen this, wow, I am being very bad at blinding you. The cover, you see that? That is so cool. And I've heard there's all kinds of like pictures and files and stuff that's I don't know what's going on here, but that's really cool. The white print on the black pages just all sounded really neat. And I'm currently reading Night Film, which also has some fun stuff like this in it. So this might be the next book that I pick up. I'm not sure. I haven't decided yet. Now, some of you may have seen in a previous video where I had the book The Queen of the Tearling by Erica Johansson. It was already tearing apart. I read it and my mom read it so it was read twice and it was paperback. Neither of us are hard on books and we didn't really carry it to or from anywhere and the cover was already starting to rip off the book and I have no idea why it was doing that but I didn't want the book if it was going to just rip the cover off of it because I loved the book and I am going to want to reread the book at least a few more times and if being read twice is going to start tearing the cover off of it, I didn't want the book. Plus, The Evasion of the Tearling, the second book, I purchased in hardcover. I was going to purchase it in the paperback to match the one that I already had, but then my paperback started tearing up so I went ahead and purchased it in hardcover because I knew that I was going to repurchase the Queen of the Tearling in hardcover. I am extremely happy with this. It got a little damaged in shipping. Like it's got crinkles on there a little bit. But the book is great. I might actually reread this before I read the second book because I haven't read the second book yet. I was so torn up about the first book tearing up <laughs> that I just I couldn't bring myself to read the second book. So now I have the first one in nice pretty Sturdy. Yes, I'm hitting my book. I'm sorry. I shouldn't treat my books that way. But I have nice, pretty, sturdy edition that is most likely not going to tear up nearly as fast as the paperback. So I'm happy now. <laughs> the next four books I am extremely excited about, but 
you guys might not be, I guess. And they are books 7 through 10 in the Zan series in hardcover. I don't remember which order they go in, but I have Dragon on a Pedestal, Golem in the Gears, Veil of the Vole. That's a little bit of a mouthful. Veil of the Vole. And Cruel Lie, all by Piers Anthony. So now I have the first 10 books all in hardcover, and I'm still trying to collect the rest of the books in hardcover. I have, I think, six or seven of the ones that are much further down. I still don't have, I know I don't have, like, the next five books, so I need to start working on that. But since I have so many of them in hardcover now, I might start reading this series again soon. I only got to book eight, I think, before, but I love them and I really want to reread them because I remember little bits and pieces, but not enough to just pick up the book because this is a series that you have to read in order. It doesn't go back and recap anything in the previous books whenever you go to the next book it just continues on which I really like but it makes it hard to set the books down for a while and then go back to them so I'm gonna have to reread all the ones that I've already read before so I can get back into the series the next books I got I have originally had these in the mass market paperback which is what these that I currently got are but I found these for 25 cents each at a local thrift store. It is book 1, 3, 4, and 5 of... It's not the Clan of the Cave Bear series, because that's what I always want to call it. It's the Earth's Children series. They're by Jean All, and the first book is Clan of the Cave Bear. The third book is The Mammoth Hunters. The fourth book is The Plains of Passage. And the fifth book is The Shelters of Stone. There are six books in the series. They didn't have book two or the last book in the series, but the last book in the series doesn't come in these matching covers. The copy that I have is still good. This is the my copy of the last book in the series called The Land of Painted Caves, and this is in nice, pretty condition. The issue that I have with the books that I had before these are the books that I am replacing from the series. The first three, not only did I end up purchasing them used, because whenever I was first getting into the series I wasn't sure if I was going to continue with it or not, so they're tearing up pretty bad, like the spines are peeling and everything. But a few years ago I had a lovely Siamese cat that decided to use my bookshelves as a scratching post, which totally mortified me whenever I found out that she was doing this to my books. Can you see that? Don't let cats anywhere near your bookshelves. Just don't do it. And the sad thing is, book four and five, actually book four is one of the only ones that didn't get scratched up, but I got the other one for 25 cents. So, and it has matching covers, so I'm not going to complain that I ended up getting a replacement for, like, a brand new book. This one I am pretty upset about because I purchased this brand new, just out of high school. Her little claws have torn the spine and ripped up all of the top of the pages. So I am getting rid of these five books. I still need to get a replacement for The Valley of the Horses, and I really want to get the one that matches the other ones that I just got, which I know I'm not going to find for like 25 cents. I can't believe I found those for 25 cents. So that is all of the repurchases that I got in October. Now on to the other basic books that I got. Whenever I got the Earth's Children series for 25 cents, I also found Please Don't Eat the Daisies by Jane. I also found Please Don't Eat the Daisies by Jean Kerr. I don't know. I don't know where I've heard of this before, but I know I've heard of it. I know that people were saying that it was really good, and it was only 25 cents, and it's teeny tiny. It's a comedy book. It's, it's comedy, and it's tiny, and it was 25 cents, so I picked it up. And me and my boyfriend went to 
a event called the Hill Climb in Newport, Indiana, and there's always this table there that has books, and sometimes they have hardcover books that are really cool, and I found three Stephen King books. I'm hoping to get Stephen King books in hardcover now. I have a ton of them in the mass market paperback. A lot of them are in horrible condition. Uh, about half of them previously used to be my sister's, and she literally devours books. She destroys books when she reads them, which is hilarious. And, like, I love seeing her books after she reads them, but I don't want to own them, if that makes sense. And I currently do own a bunch of her old Stephen King books. That being said, I have three Stephen King hardcovers. And these are all ones that I don't currently own. I have Night Shift, Dreamcatcher. I don't know if this one is 11 63 or November 22nd, 63. But I've heard a ton of good things about this. I couldn't believe that I found it. It's like in perfect condition. It was $4. It's got a little bit of uh, residue on the cover. That's easily taken care of. This one, I couldn't believe that I found. Like, Dreamcatcher is almost brand new. It, it looks like brand new. And it was $3. Night Shift, I need to look at when this was published because this is a really old cover. Okay, so it looks like this one is from 1978, but the copyright is from 1947. Goodness. This is from 1978, and the dust jacket is not torn in any way, and it was only three bucks, so how could I pass that up? And the last regular book, I'll say, that I purchased in October is Outlander by Diana Gabaldon. And I actually added this to a Amazon Prime order because I ordered the hair dye that I used to make my hair all purple. I ordered some of that, and it is an add-on item, so you have to have at least $24, $25 in uh, Amazon Prime product in order for it to ship, because it won't even ship until you have $24, $25 of Amazon product in your cart that you are purchasing. So I went ahead and purchased Outlander. Now I've saved kind of the weirdest for last. I got more hundred plus year old books. This first one is The Heart of Midlothian by Sir Walter Scott, and it's from 1909. Now this one's not a hundred years old yet, and you can't read the end, so I'll show you the inside. A Romance, Arthurian Chronicles, represented by Wace and Lehman, and this is from 1921. This is Christmas Books by Charles Dickens, and it is from 1913. I have the poems of John Keats. This is also from 1913. This is the Golden Book of Coleridge, I guess that's how you say it. This is from 1914, and I have War and Peace, Volumes 1, 2, and 3 by Count Tolstoy. And these aren't in as good a condition as I had hoped, and they're not the edition that I prefer. But they were published between 1921 and 1923, and it's still the same like size and still the same publishing company, so I'm not really upset about it, because the for what I got these for, the edition that I would really want was like six times the price and I only go for the ones that are a little lower in price. I don't go for the ones that are like $40 each because some of them are like $40 each. But the, the ones in the edition that I would really like were like six times the price as what these were. And this last one is Characters of Shakespeare's Plays by William Hazlitt's, I think. There's the inside so you can actually read it. And this is from 1915. It was July 1915, so this is just over 100 years old. And from what I can tell on this one, it is a breakdown of Shakespeare's characters, which is really cool. It wasn't what I thought it was whenever I first purchased this. 
Okay, so that's all I have to show you today. Wait! That's not all. So, as I was putting my books away, I found two more books that I forgot to mention in the video. My mom and I went to this place that I don't really know what it's called, but they go into a house after somebody leaves and they strip the house out. I don't know if it's like before it gets demolished or if it's what's going on there, but they sell like cabinets and doors and windows and they have a small selection of books for 25 cents each. And I got two books. The first one I got kind of for my mom, but I also want to read it, but I got it for her. So she's letting me have it until I finish reading it and then she said that she'll take it. But it's Warriors of the Dark Ages by Jennifer Lang and it has got the Visigoths, the Huns, the Ostrogoths, the Vandals, the Franks, the Saxons, Danes, Frisians, and Angles, and a bunch more. On the back it has a quote that says, underneath his great ferocity he was a subtle man, talking about Attila the Hun, and it just sounded really interesting. My mom went to school to be a teacher, but she secondaried in history so she could also be a junior high teacher. So I thought that she'd find this interesting because I found it interesting and I'm not very good at history, but I like reading about history. And this next one is freaking humongous and I can't believe it was 25 cents because it looks awesome. It's The Iliad by Homer, translated by Robert Fraggles, Fraggles, down a brag rock, I don't know. <laughs> but it's really cool. It's got red on the top of the pages and then it's got the decoed edges on the pages and it has a little ribbon bookmark and it's humongous that's humongous it was only 25 cents so i couldn't pass it up Ooh, there i go flashing eyes sorry and i can't believe i forgot to put these in my original recording hence the different shirt and everything i'm sorry about that back to the end of the video. I will try to pick up some of the books, but I am definitely not picking up the hundred plus year old books to try to show you because that's just an accident waiting to happen. And I'm not going to hurt my books. Here. This is my hundred year old books. Look at all the prettiness. They're already starting to slide. Like seriously, my books are this far. Let's see. Here's frame. Here's my books. They're this far from being out of frame, sitting on the floor. So these are all the books that were not repurchases. Oh, many popped. That's like half the books that I got this month, maybe. So that's all I have for you today, and I will see you in my October wrap-up.